this is a straightforward problem. Calculate the de Broglie wavelength of an electron, which is accelerated by a potential difference of 100 volts. So in this particular problem, so voltage applied, it is given as 100. And you have also being uh, uh, need to calculate the wavelength due to the application of the potential difference. So in this uh, problem, you have to make use of the relationship between de Broglie wavelength as a function of the applied voltage, which is applicable only for the charged particles. Therefore, accordingly, we can write lambda is equal to h over root 2mEV, where E happens to be a charge on the electron, capital V is the applied voltage. Substitute the uh, values for that. So you are going to have 6.6 10 power minus 34 divided by square root of 2 into mass of the electron 9.1 10 power minus 31 charge on the electron 1.6 minus 19 applied voltage is 100. So if you perform the calculation uh, it comes out to be about uh, 1.22 into 10 power minus 10. So this is uh, what the value of the de Broglie wavelength due to the motion of the electron by the application of potential difference of 100 volt. Okay, so similarly moving with one tenth part of the velocity of light. So this problem is uh, uh, straight away we are, uh, we are able to estimate however, but at the same time you have to understand the question velocity raise velocity of neutron is one tenth part of velocity of light. That is first of all write the data mass of the neutron it is 1.67 10 power minus 27 kg one data is given and you have been given the velocity that is velocity of the neutron let us say vn is the velocity of the neutron so which is having one tenth part of the velocity of it is one by ten of c velocity of light okay so straight away you can apply the de Broglie equation for this one that is lambda equal to h over mv so in place of m write the m mass of the neutron in place of V, we can have velocity of the neutron. That is 6.6 .6 into 10 power minus 34 divided by mass is 1.67 10 power minus 27 into velocity of light. That is 3 into 10 power 8 divided by 10. Okay. So if you do the from the calculation it comes out to be about 1 point that will be about 1.32 into 10 power minus 14 meters okay so in the same way let us go for the uh, problems on uh, the uh, uncertainty principle so in this problem it is given that in a measurement that involved an inherent uncertainty of 0.003%, the speed of electron was found to be 800 meter per second. Calculate the corresponding uncertainty involved in finding its position. So look at the wordings here. Uncertainty in measuring the speed of an electron was 0.003%. And the value obtained was 800 meter per second. Therefore, I can write velocity V of the electron, velocity of the electron that comes out to be V is equal to 800 meter per second that is given. Similarly, uncertainty in the measurement of velocity of electron that is delta V, it is 0.003% of value of V. That is 
0.003 divided by 100 into 800. Okay, velocity is 800. So it comes out to be 0 0.024 meter per second. Therefore, the error component you have uh, calculated is 0.024 meter per second. Then you can straight away write the uh, uh, uncertainty principle between the position and the momentum that is delta p into delta x greater than or equal to h by 4 pi or so since we want delta x that should be equal to h by 4 pi into delta p. So since you know linear momentum is the product of mass and velocity, so uh, for lower velocities we can neglect the uh, change in uh, velocity with respect to uh, change in the mass of the particle with respect to velocity. These are only the non-relativistic case we can uh, assume. Therefore, I can take it as 6.6 .6, 10 power minus 34 divided by 4 pi into delta p can be written as m into delta p. This can be written like this. So mass of the electron, it is 9.1, 10 power minus 31 into delta v is 0 0.024. Okay. So if you perform the calculation, it comes out to be about 2.4 into 10 power minus 3 meter. Okay. Right. Next, we shall go for the calculation. So, in this particular problem, the position and momentum of an electron with an energy 5 eV is simultaneously determined. What is the minimum percentage of uncertainty in its momentum if the uncertainty, the measurement of its position is 0.5 angstroms? See, uh, read the problem very carefully. It is given the position and momentum of the electron was simultaneously determined. So the electron, whatever we are using in this particular experiment, is having a kinetic energy of 5 eV. So it is given only energy there. But how can you say it is only kinetic energy in fact? So for that, you have to think of one important factor that rest mass energy of the electron, that is m0 into c square. If you substitute the value of m0 as well as if you substitute the value of c square, you will get the rest mass energy of the electron basically. So that rest mass energy of the electron will come out to be about uh, uh, 511 keV. So 511 keV of that order, you are going to get the rest mass energy of the electron. So, but in this particular problem, since the available or the given energy is less than that of the rest mass energy actually, so it must be the kinetic energy of the electron because that rest mass energy is a constant factor. So, obviously, we must think that this particular value, if it is less than that uh, uh, 511 kV, so this should be taken as the kinetic energy. This point you should always remember in this type of problem. Suppose if the problem given is, uh, is the energy of the uh, kinetic energy are in fact uh, electron energy was given as 1 MeV should have, be, should, have be, should have been given like that. So then the, you have to see that 1 MeV is always more than that of the 511 keV. Right. Therefore in such case you have to subtract the potential rest mass energy component from that one to obtain the kinetic energy of the given particle. So always remember the equation is with respect to the uh, kinetic energy of the given electron because for the moving particle or the moving system only, we can apply the uncertainty relationship, right? So obviously, we can write down as per the given data, that is, we can write it as, uh, that is Ek, Ek as equal to 5 electron volt. So, and then 
he has also been given position that is if the uncertain in the measurement of its position is delta x it is 0.5 angstroms okay so what is required now percentage of uncertainty in the estimation of the momentum of the electron see for this uh, particular calculation first of all you apply the equation delta x into delta p greater than or equal to h by 4 pi according to uncertainty principle so now you calculate the value of delta p from this so delta p will be h over 4 pi into delta x that is 6.6 .6 into 10 power minus 34 joule seconds 4 pi into delta x is 0.5 angstroms that is 0.5 into 10 power minus 10 meter so if you do this calculation it comes out to be about 1.05 into 10 power minus 24 kg meter per second okay so delta p has been calculated now so but we don't know what is the percentage of uncertainty the momentum now so one part of the problem is completed so to determine or whenever you want to find the error you should compare the standard value in fact for that purpose the calculation of the p should uh, perform when you perform the calculation of p we can write down ek is equal to half mv square or p square by 2m because you know kinetic energy can be written as half mv square that can be written in terms of momentum as p square by 2m from this estimate p p is equal to square root of 2m into ek so for this mass of the electron is substituted the kinetic energy it is uh, given as five electron volts that convert in terms of joules and then uh, determine the value of ek now i'm i mean uh, value of e, uh, p now it comes out to be 1.2 10 power minus 24 kg meter per second so look at the calculation now the actual momentum is determined now and you have got what is the component of uncertainty delta p from this i can calculate what is the percentage of uncertainty therefore percentage of uncertainty in momentum that is delta p percentage that will be equal to delta p over p into 100 substitute the corresponding values in that equation you will get the final result as around 87.5 percent okay this is how we have to uh, solve the problem of this kind now go to the next variety of uh, calculation a spectral line of wavelength 5896 angstroms evaluate minimum time spent by the electrons in the upper energy state between excitation and de-excitation process given the minimum width of the spectral line is 10 to the power of minus 5 angstroms see this uh, particular problem is straight away connected with the of the energy and time uncertainty because a uh, spectral is or uh, given photon is emitted only when there is a de-excitation between the two energy states so um, during that process the time spent by the given uh, particle in between the transition uh, process is depends or this actually decides the width of the uh, available spectral line so for that i can uh, use energy time uncertainty equation so accordingly you are going to find out the uh, equation that it is uh, we are given that wavelength of the given spectrum as 5896 angstroms and you have been given also 
the uh, minimum time spent by the electrons in the upper energy state between the exonerating process given mean of width of the spectral line that is delta lambda it is given as 10 to the power of minus 5 angstroms okay so width of the spectra in the sense it is one third or one edge of the spectra and it can have wavelength as lambda if you take the opposite edge of the line it is lambda plus d lambda, delta lambda or d lambda difference will be delta lambda that's what uh, uh, we can take we can consider the width of the spectra in terms of wavelength term only so it is 10 to the power of minus 5 angstroms so now you write the energy time uncertainty equation for this so we know that delta e into delta t greater than or equal to h by 4 pi right so that is one uh, particular equation we can use apart from that now write down delta e in terms of the wavelength that is for a photon you know that e is equal to he that is given by he upon lambda right on. now differentiate this therefore delta e can be given as equal to so h c into delta of 1 by lambda right or this can be written as h c into minus 1 upon lambda square delta lambda therefore uh, since we are in need of the magnitude of energy only so that is uh, we are in need of mod e we can take up that negative value has no meaning therefore i can it as h c by lambda square delta lambda now substitute this value in the previous equation delta e into delta t therefore i can write now in place of delta e that is uh, h c by lambda square delta lambda into delta t delta e is that much into delta t greater than or equal to h by 4 pi so since we are entered in a minimum uh, time spent that is a uh, approximate delta t itself so that can be written as so we can write delta t from this equation as so we calculate delta t as uh, if you take the uh, uh, cross calculation h will be cancelled out and uh, you will get lambda square divided by uh, 4 pi c into delta lambda this gives the equation for the delta t now now substitute the values for the given components so lambda is given as 5896 angstroms so that should be equal to 5896 into 10 to the power of -10 in terms of meters whole square 4 pi into c 3 into 10 power 8 into delta lambda delta lambda is given as 10 to the power of minus 5 angstroms that is it comes out to be 10 to the power of minus 5 into 10 power minus 10 whole square okay so if you perform the calculation it comes out to be 9.2 into 10 power minus 5 seconds okay so in the same way let us uh, work out some problems on showing your concept an electron is bound in one dimensional potential well of infinite height and of width one angstrom. Calculate the energy values in ground state and also in the first two excited states. A straight forward problem, however. So you have been given the width of the potential well as one angstrom. That is 1 into 10 to the power of minus 10 meter. And uh, what is what we require is the Calculate the energy value is the ground state, that is E1. We have to find out. 
Similarly, you have to find the energy in the first two exerted states. That means E2 is how much and E3 is how much. So, you know that uh, energy of a given particle when it is bounded in a uh, one dimensional potential of infinite height is given by n square h square over 8m l square. Right? So, in this particular case, if I whenever you want to find uh, the value of E1, E1 will be n is equal to 1 means h square that is 6.6 .6 into 10 power minus 34 whole square divided by 8 into mass of the electron 9.1 10 power minus 31 L square that is 1 angstrom that is 1 into 10 to the power of minus 10 whole square. So when you calculate this value, it comes out to be 6 into 10 to the power of minus 18 joules. This gives you the ground state energy of the electron. Similarly, if you take uh, first excited energy value, so substitute in the formula n is equal to 2 here. When you substitute n is equal to 2, you are going to get 4 h square by 8 ml square. Therefore, it is E2 will be equivalent to that of 4 E1. That will be simply 24 into 10 power minus 18 joules. Like that, if you go for the third excited state, that is uh, second excited state, E3, that will be equivalent to, if I put n equal to 3 in the, n equal to 3 in the uh, basic equation, you will get 9 times E1, that will be 54 into 10 to the power of minus 15. Okay? This is how you have to uh, perform the calculations. In the same way, let us think of one more calculation. An electron is bound in one dimensional potential of infinite height and of width one angstrom. Same data is given, but a requirement is different. Calculate energy values in third and the fifth excited states. This is a little bit uh, confusing while uh, assessing the value of n. Remember one important aspect. So if you take uh, ground state means this is n equal to 1, that is ground. If you take the next level, n is equal to 2, this gives you first excited state. That is it, n equal to 3, second excited state. That is it, n is equal to 4, third excited state. Like that. Okay. Therefore, uh, what the uh, value being uh, given is width of the potential well, one angstroms, convert in terms of meters anyway. And we want the energy values the third and the fifth exited state. So third exited state in the sense what? N equal to four. Therefore, we want E4. Be careful in uh, assessing this data as per the diagram. Similarly, we want to go for fifth exited state. It should be E6. Okay. So, go back to the, again to the equation, E is equal to n square h square by 8m l square. First calculate the ground state energy by substituting n is equal to 1. It is available to be of the order of 6 into 10 to the power of minus 18 joules. Then when you uh, go for the calculation of E4, so when you go for E4, it comes out to be 16 times E1, is it not? 16 times E1. Because n square, 4 into 4, 16 is 16 times E1. So, this comes out to be 96 into 10 power minus 18 joules. Okay. Likewise, uh, if you calculate uh, E6, uh, E6 will be, so that comes out to be uh, 30, uh, 
six will be thirty six times even. Okay. So put the value of even and get the value of four energy. Right now, this is how you have to solve this. Yeah, go to the next problem. In this particular question, it is given that a particle is in a potential well of width L and has a ground state energy 10 electron volts. Calculate energy of this particle when it is the third excited state if width of the potential is halved. So a very tricky question is given. So we have been given uh, ground state energy E1. It is given as 10 electron volt. Okay. When width of the potential is L only. Right. Now calculate the energy of this particle when it is the third exit state. If the width of the potential is halved, that is to say, third exit state means it must be E4. E4 you have to calculate. Okay. And when what is the condition now? When L is nothing but L by 2. Okay. So write the equation separately for uh, the both of the calculations. That is E1 is equal to N is 1 now. H square upon 8M L square. Similarly, when you put N is equal to 4, E4 is equal to uh, 16 H square upon 8M instead of L by L square, it is L by 2 whole square. Okay. This is what the calculation you have to remember. Now divide one by the other. So if you simplify this, you get E1 by E4 is equal to 1 by 64 or E4 is equal to 64 times E1 means since E1 is given as 10 electron volts, it will be 640 electron volts. Now let us go for the next type of calculation. That is, uh, uh, a quantum particle is located in a potential of infinite height and of finite width of A. Right? That is, the width of the potential is A now. It is found in the first exit state. Right? Calculate the probability of finding the particle within an interval of A by 2 marked symmetrically at the center of the potential well. So it is uh, just to shall draw the diagram for this. So it is better for uh, solving the problem. So this is the potential well. Let us say the state with n equal to 1, ground state. This is the state with n is equal to uh, first exited means n equal to 2. Okay. So the width of the potential is given as A. Right. This width is uh, found to be A now. Uh, it is okay. Calculate the probability of the particle in the interval of A by 2. So assume that this is the position A. This is the end point A. So the width becomes equal to A. Now I will draw the midpoint of the potential well. Let us say it is somewhere here A by 2. Okay. Then I can mark another point here that a region of interest. Let us say this becomes A by 4. Similarly on the opposite side also this is 3a by 4. Okay. Now, when you draw the potential curve or uh, wave function probability curve, if you draw, it comes out to be like this for n equal to 2. Okay. So, we are in need of this much probability, whatever we are going to stretch and mark in the form of a line. So, that uh, probability we are in need of. Right. So, in this particular case, you write down the equation probability P
P will be equal to integral of mod psi square dx. So that is in this particular problem, it will be between interval is between a by 4 to 3a by 4. So you know that uh, psi is equal to a sin kx or uh, root 2 by l into, so we can write as root 2 by l root 2 by l sin n pi x by a whole square dx. This is the calculation. Or this can be written as um, root 2 by l is 2 by l it will be 2 by instead of a you can take as l instead of l you can take as a in fact it becomes 2 by a okay this can be 2 by a actually so because the width of the potential is given as a in this problem instead of l therefore modify that one 2 by a now uh, integral a by 4 to 3a by 4 sin square n pi x divided by a dx okay that is 2 by a so sin square theta can be written as in terms of uh, cos to theta form as 1 minus cos 2n pi x divided by a divided by 2 First integral is that a by 4 to 3a by 4, okay, of dx. So that particular two half we can take it out. So simply you are going to get on the outside the bag it becomes 1 by a. So now you integrate this. First one is x in the limits a by 4 to 3a by 4 minus in the second part integral of cos 2n pi x is sin 2n pi x divided by a over so coefficient of x is 2n pi by a within the limits a by 4 to 3a by 4. Now if you substitute the limits of integration for the whole thing. So you are going to get uh, that is 3a by 4 minus a by 4. It will be 1 by a. So 3a by 4 minus a by 4. It becomes a by 2. And if you substitute uh, a lower limit, uh, I mean uh, uh, this is a resultant value a by 2 itself we have got. And on the other side, if you put that particular value of uh, 3a by 4 or a by 4 for x value x uh, term so the uh, sign term will give you 0 for that one that I can write like this so it is nothing but equal to half as the final value which is 50 percent this is how we have to solve the problem of this kind okay